one of the areas that I'm particularly interested in is uh, how non-neuronal cells are involved in brain function. By this I mean cells that don't use electricity. Only 15% of the cells in the brain are neurons. So if we're going to map the brain, we're going to leave out 85% of the cells. These other cells called glia, which is uh, what I'm particularly interested in um, in my research right now, I think should be included in the brain mapping initiative, and as I understand it now, it's not. And I think that's a, a tremendous oversight. So it's not a brain mapping initiative from my point of view. It's a worthy goal, very important, but it's a neuron mapping issue. Um, and I think the brain may be the only organ that we're going to attempt to understand by overlooking the primary cells in that organ, and that, that seems a little bit of an oversight to me. One kind of glial cell is in white matter. And white matter uh, is, everyone's heard of gray matter. But the brain is made of two tissues. The, the gray matter is where all the neurons are in the synapses and the dendrites. And that's like the leather on a, on a baseball. White matter is the core of the brain. It's like the fibers inside the, the core of a baseball. Half the human brain is white matter. And it's formed of all these connections, millions of connections between neurons. And this has been, um, of little interest to neuroscientists because the prevailing view was that all the information processing was taking place in the gray matter in the neurons. But um, brain imaging has shown that when we learn, like learn to juggle or learn to play the piano, there were these unexpected changes in the white matter. Um, and this, this was uh, completely unexpected and hard to understand. Why would changing the, the wiring have anything to, to do with how smart you are learning? So our research has been focused on exploring how white matter can be involved in learning. And we found that the uh, insulation on uh, axons, which are the wire-like processes out of neurons, is formed by a glial cell called an oligodendrocyte. This insulation speeds the transmission of information through the brain 50 times. And our research has shown that electrical activity can signal to these glial cells, and the glial cells can make more myelin. So they will be able to change the speed at which information flows through your brain. We're seeing this as a new form of learning uh, beyond the traditional forms of learning that involve connections between neurons at synapses. Um, and probably a different kind of learning that's particularly important in childhood development uh, because the, this process of forming myelin takes place through the first two decades of life. Um, and uh, so that's one of the things that I'm particularly interested in is new mechanisms of learning that go beyond our traditional thinking of how at a cellular level we learn. A single generation of their work caused a radical upheaval. Would you like for everybody to join in?